my ducks, my swans, welcome <clears throat> to the pond. My name is Dorian from group 82 university.com. I'd like to welcome all y'all into the live. All the replay viewers, welcome. Let me know where y'all from. I love seeing y'all comments, the replay viewers. So let me know where y'all from, where you watching that. I wasn't going to go live, but, you know, a lot of y'all have been telling me that late at night <clears throat> when we do these lives. Sorry, I need to watch. A lot of y'all been telling me late at night when we do these lives that, <clears throat> that, you know, they help you get through whatever. They help you get through what you got going on at home. They help you get through your job. They help you get through um, just thoughts or some of y'all at work right now, you listen to it. So I appreciate y'all doing that. Thank you for everybody has been tuning in, been locking in. I got a TubeBuddy link. Let's put that in there. If you don't have TubeBuddy, go ahead and download it right now. It's free. Also, something else free. First time I'm doing this on live. My music marketing class is done. How to market your music on social media. And there's a link in the bio. And I, I mean, I'm, there's a link in the description box as well as a link in the comments where you can get a free lesson. So the first lesson of the class, the first section of the class, you'll get it for free. So you can go click that right now. You can get that for free. And, you know, that's something that we've been working really, really hard at. If you want to know how to get more fans or ready to buy your music, this class is going to be it. It's going to be absolutely everything that you need to get what you want out of the music business, out of the music industry. And that's what I'm telling everybody in here. If you want to be in the music industry, you absolutely need to do this. It's hot as hell in here. You absolutely need to do this. If you want to be in the music industry, you have to develop a strategy of how you're going to get your music heard. And that's the toughest thing to do, you know, going to the studio and making music and figuring out how to find a good engineer and how to master it and distribute and how to write songs and the themes and album sequence and treatments for videos. You know, all that stuff can be difficult, too, but that's a part of the creative process. And inside the class, we don't talk about the creative process. Because that's you. You know, you need to be your own creative. Whatever you want to do, it's on you. The marketing comes down to having a strategy in place that actually works. And y'all see the plaques. Y'all see the millions of streams. I've charted number one on iTunes. This is something that I've been doing for six years. I've really gotten after this for six years. And now... I'm giving you everything that I went through in the past six years. I'm giving it to you in six weeks. And the price is $2,000. And the reason the price is $2,000 is because if you try to do anything in the music business, $2,000 divided over six years is is what? $350, $325 a year. I can tell you this right now. You know, you're, you're going to spend way more than $300, $400 a year trying to get your music heard, trying to figure out music videos and whatever it is that you're trying to do. You know, you're going to spend way more than that. And so <clears throat> you spend the $2,000 right now, and that is going to put you ahead of everybody else who says they take this music shit serious because they don't. They don't, you know. And here's an idiot right here. I feel a little weird about someone who's not in the industry selling classes on how to get in there, you know. And I think I probably made a mistake titling the video music industry because it really is about the music business. You know, if, if you're somebody who wants to sign to a record label and you're somebody who wants to suck dick in back rooms, I'm not for you. You know, this class isn't for you. It's not. But like I said, at this point, if you don't know how to Google me and figure out to verify that I know what the fuck I'm talking about, because the proof is in the pudding. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. I do this every day. I'm a full time musician. I can literally not make content for the next year and make music. And nothing in my family's life changes. Nothing. I wake up when I want. I go to sleep when I want. I work out when I want. I vacation when I want. I make as much money. I make more money than I ever had when I was working for somebody. So if this ain't for you, then leave. But if you're somebody that wants this, stay. It's 2021. It's not that hard to verify somebody is legit or not. 
And the fact that y'all can even question that about me at this point, you don't even need to be watching my content because everything I'm saying is just going to go over your head. So, you know, go find somebody else who will take your money. You know, promise you that they'll get you to the BET Awards or some shit. You know, so, you know, it's there's there needs to be a strategy. You need to absolutely be consistent with the strategy. And if you watch the first class, the first lesson that's free, I show you how to find your target audience. I really break down audiences and I break down how I segmented my audience and how I use that for when I'm marketing. And that is something that people really need to do. You know, you need to very you need to simplify your audience. You need to very you need to identify who they are. You need to find out who they are and how they do things. And it makes it a lot easier for you when it's time for you to write a song, make a video, do a marketing campaign, do collaborations, make content, you know, because you have personified your audience. So go get that free lesson. Go click it. Go get that free lesson. You ain't losing nothing, you know, and get an opportunity to see what this shit's about and how I'm able to have the success that I've had. I'm serious, dude. Like, there's like when we first started Group A to music, you know, I did research on the whole music business, you know, and I was seeing if somebody was going to do what I was doing. And there were a few companies that were kind of doing it, but that's what they were promising. We can get you on the red carpet of the BG Awards. You can't promise that shit. This is shit that's out there, and people are paying for it. So that's what you want to do. Just D, appreciate that, bro. How long do you play it on selling this class or just something where we can come back even a year or a year or two later? It's up. Class is up. You know, once once uh once Friday comes, it's launch. You know, the class is that's that's staying up. I'm not I'm not one of these people that put a class up in limited time. That doesn't make any sense to me. You know, this is information. And it's up. You're gonna have access to it. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do about updating. I'm not sure yet. So I'm not gonna make any promises about that. But I can tell you this, you know. How to get one million streams on Spotify, how to chart number one on iTunes, how to set up your business for your music, how to hire a team when you don't have any money, um, how to really develop a content strategy for Instagram, for YouTube, for live streaming, for emails, you know, how to develop a brand, like how to trigger psychological. I was going to say I trigger psychological actions, but that's not really true. But how to play on human psychology in your favor for your music and your brand. This is stuff I talk about inside of class and I break down how I did it for me, you know, and it's worked, right? My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pond. Every time I leave the house and I go out at night, somebody yells at me, someone I don't know. How'd that happen? I talk about that inside of class, you know, so all y'all always talking about y'all want people to give you game. I give game every single day. You know, and now here's an opportunity for the very serious people who want the processes behind the game, who want the deep diving behind the game. This is it. You know, and that's worth two thousand. That's that's worth. You know, I'm, I'll tell you all this. This course ain't always going to be two thousand dollars. Just leave it at that. So fuck around. Wait, if you want to. Someone promised me to put a, put me on a New York billboard. See, there you go. They always be lying. Hey, Dora, special content. Admire the work you do. Thanks. Please keep it up. No doubt. Y'all hit share. Hit share. Hit like. Tell me what city you're from. Give me people in here as you possibly can. Share to Facebook. Share to Twitter. Share to your email list. Share to whatever options to give you to share. Click every single one. Text it to somebody. You know, because there's somebody that you know that wants to do this music business, music industry thing. And here you go. You know, this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to make consistent money. I get paid every single day for my music. And I get paid from every single every single day from music related entities, whether I put effort into it or not. You know, my music makes me money every day. My YouTube makes me money every day. My my podcast makes me money every day. And I don't even talk about the podcast side of class. You know, I have multiple things that are making me money every single day. And that's how you got to set yourself up where you, where you can become a full time artist. Leo Garz, appreciate you, bro. Great music with bad marketing or bad music with great marketing. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <clears throat> don't know what you're talking about, bro. Houston was good. New Brunswick for Lauderdale. What's the best platform app or website to release music off of? Once again, 
you know, you have to think. You're a, you're a fan of music too, right? I assume you listen to music too, right? If Drake drops an album tomorrow, where you can go listen to it at? That's where your music should be. You know, if some of y'all gonna get inside of class, and you're gonna wonder why the first three games we don't really dive deep into music as much as we do into marketing and business and the psychology, because that's the most important part. You know, I literally set the music. I mean, I literally set the class up. So it's very easy for you to follow it in chronological order. And there are going to be things in there you're like, okay, now that I got this set up, I can do this. I can do that. Whoop -de -whoop. I refer back to other games and other quarters inside the class. So that way I, you keep yourself in, on track and you, keep, and you hold yourself accountable. There's a playbook that comes with the class that basically has an activity for damn near every section. Um, so that way you can actually type things and write things down. And, you know, all these things help you learn these concepts because once you start learning them, and you start applying them, it becomes second nature. But you have to make it a part of who you are. That's the problem with a lot of y'all right now. You're not making this stuff a part of who you are. You're not making your music marketing a part of who you are. You're not making your brand a part of who you are. You know, like to ask what's the best platform app website to release music off of, like you should know that because you're a fan that listens to music. Does your class also help a podcast? You know, yes, it does. You know, the first three sections especially help a podcast. Once you get to, well, you know, I got, I can't say sections. I got to say games, you know, because I broke it up because I used to coach college basketball. So I broke it up into six games, four quarters in each game. And so the first three games absolutely help you with anything that you do. Games four through six are more geared towards the music. And game six is like all about Spotify. But, you know, people listen to Spotify on, I mean, people listen to podcasts on Spotify. So if you're someone who has a podcast, even though the class is geared towards music marketing, and I talk about music all the time throughout it, you know, the principles are still universal. So no question, it absolutely helps a podcast. Education ain't free. They can pay money to learn, avoid mistakes, or they can make mistakes and lose more money and time, learn the hard way. He's he's hitting y'all with everything, you know, six years. I had to pay for this six years. I, I'm telling you, I paid way more than two thousand dollars and you start factoring the time and off work and the debt and, and getting out of it. And, you know, sacrificing relationships and health and sleep, you know, moving just all types of shit that I had to deal with. You know, it's, it's way more than two thousand. This class should really be like 10 G's. I was asked the question, which would you rather have? What kind? Who gives a fuck? What kind of dumbass question is that? How does that help anyone? I mean, like United Masters, Digital Kid, et cetera, which one is, is, is the best one? Those aren't apps or websites. Those are distributors. You don't even know a question that you're asking. You need to go watch some of my videos. Okay? You're not ready for the class. You're not ready. You know, this is not for you. You need to go and do more research on your own, you know, and I say the class for people in all levels of music marketing. But if you're somebody that doesn't understand how to post on Instagram, you're somebody that doesn't understand how to upload a video to YouTube. If, if you're somebody that doesn't understand, you know, distributors. And I talk about distributors inside the class, you know, this the class isn't going to help you because you're so far behind and you're not doing the work. You're not putting in the reps. You lack the work ethic where the class will pay dividends for you. So it's just, it's not, it's not worth it for you. How useful is having a website for your music? It's very useful. I talk about this inside the class, you know, having a website. And I talk about how to set your website up for sales. That's a quarter inside the class because your website can do all types of shit for you. Now we'll go deeper. But I gave a lot of it inside the class. <laughs> so you, you, you got to get that class and figure out what it is. Do you mix some ass in your own vocals? I don't. 
<clears throat> I'm learning how to mix right now. Um, that's like, you know, I've really been working on this class, man, for about four months. And it, it's, it's just been a whole team effort. Everybody at Group 82 has contributed in some capacity. Even people that weren't with us before. I mean, who weren't with us now, people came back and helped um, and got compensated for that. But, you know, I've been so locked into this. I haven't really been focused on the engineering as 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 much. But, you know, once this thing launches on Friday and it gets going, really gets going, I'm I'm in there. Nova Kane, I'm a blind rapper. I listen to your channel all the time. I was wondering if I could ask you a question. I think you sent us an email. You know, you were talking about like the website or something. There's something I didn't I didn't even consider about people who are uh, visually impaired and being able to consume the content on the website. You know, so absolutely. Signing other what do you want to sign other artists for? What are you talking about? Dorian ain't been doing this a while. Trust the process and lessons he will teach us. I was asking because I know great music does always get the push it deserves. Who cares? And what the fuck they got to do with you? Nothing. What do other people's music got to do with you? Nothing. Do you make music? Do you want to know how to market it? Then Okay, listen. Like You're asking questions that are irrelevant. I don't I don't have nobody right now. <clears throat> I don't have no engineer right now. I don't have no studio right now. Like I, I just answered that 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 question. Literally just told you. Like I'm gonna focus on this class. So learn to mix my own shit. Absolutely. You know. I'm going to just tell y'all this, man. You know, <clears throat> I don't tell y'all to go into other people's lives and talk about me. So why are y'all coming in my life talking about them? Think if you were a realtor and you had your sign in front of a house and somebody else's fan of another realtor company came and put their sign in front of that house. How would you feel? You put your time, your effort, your money, your resources into trying to sell this house. And then somebody else is trying to market it, their realty company, realtor company at the same house. That's what it is when y'all come in and talk about other people. If you want to do deal with them people, then go fuck with them. There's no reason to be talking about them inside my life. I don't tell y'all to do that for me. I know. I remember the first time you want to do this class with a pond. You executed and you now you finished extremely motivating for a procrastinator like me. But I sincerely improved doing to be inspired by your work ethic daily. You know what I mean? And I appreciate that, man. It's it's been um it was a lot of work, man. It was a lot of work. Like a lot. <laughs> it was a whole lot of work, man. You know, from just but writing a curriculum, filming the videos, you know, filming them a little differently. They they still are like my traditional videos, but you know, they're slightly different. Um organizing the the whole class, making sure it's on the up and up, you know, just it was, it was just a lot, man. It's just a whole lot. How far out for you releasing next out? I don't even know, man. I'm not thinking about that right now at all. Does your class cover anything with NFTs? No, it's not. Because that has nothing to do with music marketing. JT Coin Rings, appreciate that, man. Thank you for $1.99. How'd you go number one on iTunes? It's in the class. Literally, I have a whole game that says how to go number one on iTunes. I break it all the way down, show you exactly what I did and how I did it. <clears throat> Dwayne, love your videos. What your brand stands for, the hustle and everything. Keep them coming. No doubt. It's different when you have an entire team. It's really not. You know, it's not. People think it is, but it's not. When, when you have a team, only thing that your team does are the things you were doing on your own. Like, it's 
it's it's not like that your team that you hire somebody and all of a sudden they just bring all these great ideas to you that completely align with your brand and they all make you tons of money. It's not like that, you know. Everybody has their own thought process on what they think works. And it's up to you to decide what works for your brand or what and what doesn't. Most people don't have a capitalistic mentality. And when you're running a business, you got to understand capitalism. So if you hire a team, man, that doesn't mean that person is going to bring you ideas. It's going to make you money. It's just not like that. You know, you have to figure that shit out. So hiring a, a team, and I got a whole section about the whole quarter about that inside the class. You know, it's not going to be your end all be all. And a lot of y'all think it is. And it's not. It's not. How long is, is the class? So I say the class takes about six weeks because it's, it's six. It, and you work at your own pace. You know, for some of y'all might take a year. For some of y'all, y'all might get done in a week and a half. You know, so I say it takes about six weeks um, because, you know, it's six sections, six games, four quarters each game. There's activity for each one. And then, you know, a lot of information stuff you're going to be going back to. Right. Like the first three games. You know, you really got to sit there and really think about, is this aligning with what I want to represent? And then once you get to games four through six, which is about the music stuff, you know, when you decide to drop an album, how to chart number one on iTunes, this Red Bull's killing me right now, <clears throat> how to chart number one on iTunes, like that, that's going to be the thing that you really want to do. But that doesn't apply to you dropping an album. You know, when you uh <clears throat> when you have a song you want to go on Spotify and all that, you know, that doesn't apply until I mean the whole Spotify section doesn't apply to you want to go on Spotify. Jesus Christ, <laughs> don't scorch it. <coughs> yeah, that Red Bull picking me up. I can't fuck with that right now. Um, They got a whole Nipsey playlist. When's the class start? Class drops on Friday. We having a launch party on Friday. I'm gonna be on here. On uh, I don't really need to have my headphones on. Well, I guess I do. Kind of. I'm gonna take them off right now so I can cool off. But you know, it starts on Friday, and so once Friday happens, we're gonna have a little launch party on here. You'll be able to go buy it. How much prep work time do you dedicate to the average video you upload? Okay, you asking too many questions. Um, so how much prep time? It really matters on the topic. You know, I I find a clip that I'm interested in. The clip might already be on somebody else's Instagram page or something. Or I might be watching an interview of something and I might see a clip that I think works and it triggers a thought. I save that clip inside of my notes on my phone. And then I take that clip. And then when I decide to film, I go and click it, I go and watch it, and then I set up my camera and I film. So my, my prep time, you know, really isn't much. If it's a video that needs a lot of research, you know, the longest I've ever spent prepping for a video probably was 30 minutes, if that. I spent $3,200 for a class to be a welding inspector. I make that every week now, even more, straight out of poverty. So I can definitely relate, Ben, on yourself. Absolutely. Wish I had 2K laying around, but I definitely don't. You got to earn the money, man. You know, you got to earn the money. There was a time I didn't have $2,000 neither. But I can tell you this, you know, if you want to be in the music business, you know, you you better figure out a way to come up with two thousand dollars when you need it. There's gonna be something gonna happen. 
You know, it might be film a video. It might be the get a feature. And these are things I don't even really advocate like that. But, you know, you're going to need to have $2,000. And if you ain't got $2,000 to educate yourself, this ain't for you. I mean, that's that's not that's not a lot of money. 2K ain't shit. It's not. It, it really isn't. I'll be honest. Like, this class should be 5Gs. The only reason the class is not 5Gs is because I know y'all can't afford 5Gs. That's the only reason. I made the class as low as I possibly could price-wise, given the value and what y'all could afford. No. Y'all got to figure it out. Liver food till you have 2K. For real. I mean, there's so many ways to make money now, like, if you just put away fifty dollars a week, you know that's two hundred dollars a month. In ten months, you had two thousand dollars. The thing about it is when you start putting money away, fifty dollars a week, like you're gonna start putting away a hundred dollars a week to two hundred dollars a week. So it ain't gonna take you ten months. It's probably gonna take you four or five. Like y'all got the money, you just spend it on a bunch of dumb shit. You know, I'm fourteen the pandemic. I don't know how I made two G's. When you fourteen, you up at one o'clock in the morning. Like you could be making some money right now. You could be making some content that can make you some money right now. You 14 years old. There's a bunch of shit you could be doing. You don't want to make no money. There's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to make money as a as a as a teenager. Why aren't you watching them? Why aren't you executing them? Like it's not like us when we were 14. When we were 14, the only way we can make money is if our parents told us we can make money. You know, we had to actually sell something physical. Y'all can sell something digital. You can sell yourself digitally, you know. TikTok motherfuckers getting paid off of that. Getting paid off Instagram, getting paid off YouTube. You can teach yourself how to edit video. There's so many things you can do. And the pandemic's over. So, you know, there's always going to be an excuse. You up at one o'clock in the morning watching somebody, you can figure out how to make some money. Hey, boss, what are your priorities at 21? You know, be the best I could every day. Um, I was sick of college at that time, but. You know, even though I wasn't really focused on college, even though I was there, I was focused on trying to get into the NBA as a uh, video coordinator. Like, that's what I was really focused on doing. I was doing everything in my power trying to make it happen. You know, like, I've been locked into my goals since I was 17. Whatever I put my mind to, I was in it. Facts. I blew three gay, three k gambling in ten days. That's something. See what I'm saying? Niggas got money. Niggas just be spending on on dumb shit. Like everybody in here has touched two thousand dollars this year. Everybody. You know, if if you work every day, you got a job. You work four to five days a week. You have touched two thousand dollars in the first six months of the year. What'd you do with it? If you can't save two thousand dollars, you don't need to be in the music business. You know. I had to get on one of my homeboys about some shit. He told me he ain't have enough money to go to Vegas. Like, you a grown ass man. The fuck you mean you ain't got enough money to go to Vegas? You don't have a thousand dollars. You have fifteen hundred dollars. You have two thousand dollars. Fuck are you doing? You know, like at a certain point, you got to make these decisions. And nobody gonna do this shit for you. That's the reason I'm dropping the, the class too. You know, I love educating y'all, but at the same time, I want people who are serious. A lot of y'all not serious. It is what it is. I have planned life to my 50s, but like there's always some unexpected surprises. Ain't nobody got their life plan to their 50s. No one knows. You gotta get, get with it. What the fuck you talking about? Do whatever you, do whatever you want to do, man. You got to put yourself in that position. Nobody's going to do this for you. Nobody's going to sit around by, oh, I think this person will be a great fit and to sign to my label and I'm going to spend all my money on it. You know, a lot of y'all want to get signed to a label. You think, how would you feel if you signed to a label and they only spent $2,000 to market your music? Think about that shit. I'm telling you how to market your music. For two thousand dollars, like I'm giving you all the keys, and a lot of that stuff in there doesn't really cost no money. You know, how would you feel if a label only spent two thousand dollars? Two thousand dollars ain't shit. You 
you know, y'all, y'all gotta figure it out. Being broke is a disease. It's contagious as fuck, you know, and a lot of y'all are stuck in it. Now, y'all don't want to get out. <clears throat> Bro, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't care. I don't I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about, man. No, don't. Don't do it. I don't know what you're talking about. Major labels marking music nobody cares about all the time. Absolutely. Headphones making me feel weird. Red Bull. Fucking with that shit no more. You know, you gotta figure this shit out. I don't know how y'all expect to make it in music if you don't put in the time, if you don't invest in yourself. I I just don't. I don't know what to tell you. I have no idea what to tell you. Hey, bro, I never really like YouTube videos like that until I came across your channel. You deserve more support, D. I'm going to help as low ways as I can. I appreciate that, man. You know, share and get people out there. But just accept the knowledge, man. Accept the knowledge and apply it. You know, I think sometimes y'all y'all get more caught up on the numbers and stuff than I do. And I appreciate y'all support with that. But, you know, the information is supposed to get to is supposed to get to. And, you know, I'm I grow every day, so it don't matter. I got my headphones. I got the link inside the, uh, not the subscription box, but another ones. But, you know. They don't, they don't know what to ask. People don't know what to ask. And this is, you know, and they wonder why music doesn't work. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Leo, appreciate the twenty-one dollars. Thank you for that, man. Via Cash App, thank you for that. Damn, by the storm, shit. No, if if y'all want the free lesson for the class, go here. Put your email in. Go watch the first lesson already. Y'all ain't got no more questions. This is more of a Q and A tonight than you know me getting my opinion. You just gotta work hard, have connections. You don't have to have connections. That's not a that's not a thing. Like that's a lie. You know. As a stand up comic, your vids inspire and encourage me. The business side of the game is very similar to the music game. Thank you for always providing value. There's a lot of similarities, man. Absolutely. You know, stand up comedians, y'all. Y'all have a different skill set that most people could never imagine. Have you ever brought your music to labels or felt rejection from higher ups? How do, how do you deal with it? Um, you know, there's a lot of people that have heard my music or seen my videos, you know, but until the marketing matched the music, no one was really paying attention. But once the marketing started back matching the music, I didn't need them for shit. So it was like, like. I, I needed y'all when I needed marketing. Now I don't really need y'all. So why would I give y'all equity? It don't make any sense. If you talents, it's just a matter of time. And that's just not true neither. You know, this is what y'all need to stop doing. You know, if you aren't a full time musician, stop telling, stop giving people advice about the music business. If if you can't go the whole next year and just make music every day. And your life doesn't change and you will be able to live where you want to live and vacation and do what you want and drive what you want and all that. Stop giving advice. You don't know what you're talking about. All this shit that y'all been saying is just it's just bullshit. It's all crap. It's all lies. Talent doesn't mean shit. Doesn't mean a fucking thing. Doesn't mean nothing. It's not a matter of time. Talent don't mean shit. Nothing. Like literally nothing. You don't need connections. Are, are you doing music full time? So who are you to give advice?
I have a question about showcase placement. If any artists who you play the showcase have came back releasing Grover Spot if I know that show, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't follow them niggas. I don't, I don't keep up with it, you know, because once again, like, that's not on me. I should put you in front of the audience that day. If you keep the audience, that's up to you. But you got to have the shit in place to keep the audience. 99.9% of artists don't have the shit in place to keep the audience. That's why we have the class. It teaches you how to have, it teaches you how to put the stuff in place to keep the audience. So I don't keep up with them niggas. I don't know. I have played so many independent artist songs. It's insane. I'm not keeping up with fucking nobody because most niggas don't execute and they're lazy and they don't have marketing. I don't give a fuck. I don't. So I don't know what happened. You know, there's some songs I heard are like, yo, this is one of the best songs I ever heard in my life from an independent artist. Nigga got like 17 monthly listeners because he don't want to do shit. Fuck him. Hey, man, listen. Stop asking these dumbass questions, bro. Who gives a fuck about my top five rappers? We talking about music business, music marketing, okay? Stop that. Would you recommend YouTube ask for my first music video? No. What advice would you give an independent artist from third world country as far as marketing is, is concerned? The internet and social media works for everybody, no matter where, where you live. Talents, are you, you're 14. Do you even have hair on your nuts? Who are you to tell anybody about how to keep a fan base? You're not even showing your face. Why are you talking? You're fucking 14. You don't know shit from Shinola. You know nothing. You're the last person should be talking about anything. This is the world that we live in. We live in a world where 14-year-olds feel like they can tell 36-year-olds about how to achieve in life. This is the world that we This is what social media has done. This is, this is what it's done. Everybody has had a voice. And all they're doing is reciting what other people have said when they haven't done it themselves. Y'all need to shut the fuck up. You don't know shit. Because just as easy as it is to tell somebody... It's even easier to do than it used to be. And y'all don't want to do. Y'all scared to post. Y'all telling other motherfuckers how to be successful and you're scared to post on social media. Because you don't know shit. You're 14. You don't have your dad in your life, do you? You don't know fucking nothing. You need to shut the fuck up. And I'm telling you this as to keep you safe as a 14-year-old. Because once you get 18, 19, people not going to tell you that. They're just going to say, oh, he's a fucking idiot. I ain't listening to him. He's dumb. Don't listen to nothing he got to say. Don't bring him around. You're going to, you're saying so much dumb shit now that no one who eat, who is even going to be of value to you is going to want to be around you or put you in their circles. Because they're going to think you're a fucking idiot. Stop talking. You don't know shit. Fucking child. Like, you're an infant. You ain't even touched the pussy. You trying to tell other motherfuckers how to achieve shit. When I was 14, 15, I know there was adults that I was smarter than. I still shut the fuck up. And I know I was smarter than them. I had adults tell me I was smarter than them. And I still listened. Because they got 20 more years experience with, than me. So even though I might know more about something, they know more about life. And life is in everything. Whatever you want to tell yourself, it's a broken mentality. You're scared to show your face and you're 14. It's one o'clock in the morning and you're looking at another dude on social media and you want to tell me that you're going to be bigger than me. What's that do for you? That, that make you feel good about yourself? That's the immature, childish mentality. You're stroking your own ego. For what? You don't even have an ego. You're barely in high school. What's wrong with you, man? You need to go play some sports. Get a fucking coach. Heard from your vid about the offseason. Cole would give himself drills when you decide to take serious in Muhammad's career. Do you work on your craft the same way? You know, 
the writing of music right now, no, because I just haven't been in that season. Everything else, I don't do drills, but, you know, I do what I need to do to keep myself sharp on shit. Absolutely. Best marketing and promotion tip. You got to get more specific than that. How can you get a fan base? I got a whole class on it. How to market your music on social media. Click to, click this link and go watch the free lesson. First lesson. Put Got to put your email in. Good ass. These kids, they, they aren't mis, mis, misguided. You know, they just, they have a platform to express their immature thoughts. Kids ain't changed. The technology has. That's all it is. The same shit his ass is saying as motherfuckers were saying it in high school. But it was different when it was just like he's saying it at the lunch table. Because at the lunch table, you'd be like, yeah, I'm not listening to this nigga. I'm going to eat my chicken nuggets. You know, but now they want to come on social media and say it. It's like, Yo, you're, you got to address it. You're an idiot. Cut out. So you know about Bruno Mars and shit? You saying talent don't matter? What are you talking about, bro? The only reason that you know about Bruno Mars is because he signed to a record label and they have put probably $100 million of marketing behind him. You think Bruno Mars is the most talented person on earth? He's the one that got the marketing. Why are you talking? Might be him. Dorian, when you first started marketing music, would you say it was hard at first? Yeah, it was hard because <laughs> nobody was guiding. Nobody was, was teaching. Nobody was sharing because nobody really knew. And the people that did know, you know, they were so selfish and greedy because they were relying on other people to pay their bills, they didn't want to help. You know, so it, it was difficult. But you just really, really got to dig and you got to keep looking. You got to keep reading. You got to really research. That's the number one thing y'all need to know how to do is absolutely is research. And because I've always been a good researcher, it made it easier for me to figure out shit, you know. If you're trying to learn, then shut the fuck up. You can't learn when you're talking. When you're young, it sounds harsh, and when you look back, the lessons were true. Absolutely. 100%. Appreciate y'all watching that video. Thank you so much, Dorian, for the YouTube videos. I started making beats two days ago. I already made a sale just by being consistent, starting to see results. Thank you so much. No doubt, man. No doubt. You know, you making a sale. Keep being consistent. Keep putting it out. Absolutely. Russ is a great artist and marketing strategist. Do you think his strategy putting out songs on a weekly basis is great for a fresh new artist to put himself or herself out there? Gotta be consistent. I say you need to put out shit every day. You know, it's true about Bruno Mars too. He was born inside the industry. For real, I found this channel while doing research. What were you researching? Maybe. Back to John was respect, code, and loyalty, and all that loss. Now, people, all this record coming now, it's, it's, it never was, was like that. You know, I'm not doing no features right now. We're about to vote you out to out the pond, you know? All right, bro. Use, use. Child, man. Child. I don't know. And you know what happens? Like, y'all do this when you're 14, and then you get 19. Now you're an adult, and you start talking, and then you get embarrassed. I'm, I'm telling you, you just need to shut the fuck up. Especially at, with, with, with y'all generation, you know, I wouldn't be saying shit. Like, there's so much information. There's so many opinions that are being thrown at you. You know, things that we were shielded from at 14, y'all don't have that. You know, there was things I find, found out about when I was 16, 19, 24, 30, you know, that y'all finding out now when y'all ate. And it's just like, just shut up and just listen. 
Just listen. Listen. And whatever thoughts that, that you have, opinions you have, you know, gravitate towards it, but process it internally. Then once you get to the point where you see your opinions are pretty consistent with your confidence, then start talking. But y'all just be fucking talking and don't know nothing. That's why it's a lot of people are 30 years old and idiots. When I first joined the pond, said some dumb shit, you went off on me, but I shut up because I'm used to that type of coach. If a nigga like you taking the energy to speak, best the best listen. And that's what it is. It's like, you you know, there's too many people talking. There's too many people talking. A lot of folks don't need to be talking. You don't know shit. You know, there's a lot. Of, you don't ever hear me talk about hockey. I don't know shit about hockey. Nothing. I ain't gonna talk about it. When do I give hockey analogies? I don't. No shit about no hockey. Videos keep popping up on my feed. That's what's up. Interesting about all I have available up here in, in Alaska. That's all you need. What would you recommend to create a buzz? Buy my class. I was just asking questions, dog. My bad. No, you weren't asking questions. You were giving advice when, you know, you haven't even seen a nipple in real life. Like, you know, it's it's like, shut up. <laughs> no one's listening to you about shit. <laughs> I'm great as an artist. Marketing is what I need help with. Stop telling yourself that you're great as an artist because it doesn't matter. You know, that actually gets in your way. No one cares. Okay. Marketing is everything. That's why I have a class. How to market your music on social media. Click the link and get the free lesson. Get on the email list. You know, all you all you young kids, and I'm telling y'all this because I see the idiots. I, I see the 25, 30, 35. I see 40-year-old idiots who, who didn't shut the fuck up. They didn't listen. You know, and now, once I finally got whatever I got, you know, they started calling me. Like, niggas would just call me and be wanting to have me to have one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with them and shit. I ain't doing that. I'm not doing no feature with you, man. I just said that. Say something else dumb, I'm blocking you. You're fucking weird. Dropped the tape when I was 18. Had some love shown from it. To a country idiot's trash me. Not gonna lie, destroyed my confidence when I heard one negative over a dozen of compliments. You know, I'll just give you advice on this. That's part of it. And if you can't handle that, you're not built for this. Period. Because the more fans you get, the more negativity you get. It's usually from 14 year old idiots. Man, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you subscribing. What's good? I've been a fan of your channel for a while. I respect your grind. You taught me a lot about this game. But my one question, how are you able to promote your Spotify and still profit? You know, you can get on playlists for free. Inside the class, I, I show you how to find Spotify players for free. It's just a matter of you want to put in the time or not. You know, time don't cost you nothing. I don't take no money out of your pocket, really. You know, so that's all profit. Just a matter of you want to put in the time or not. <laughs> Sad is, man. No, you 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 can't have an opinion. Listen to what you just said. I'm listening, but I also can't have an opinion, man. I watch a lot of Russ interviews and shit, and that's what he said, fam. You're repeating what another man said. That's not an opinion. You're an echo. You're a drone. You're a slave. You're a robot because you don't know shit. This is why you shouldn't have an opinion because you don't have an opinion. You got Russ's opinion because you don't know shit. You just answer your own question because you're fucking 14. Shut the fuck up. You don't know nothing yet. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay because you're 14. Because I'm telling you, once you realize you know too much, that shit's scary as fuck. This is exactly why you shouldn't talk. Because y'all just repeat what other people said. You don't know nothing. You haven't felt it. You haven't been through it. You don't know shit. No one's going to listen to you. No one with any substance and any sense who's doing this for real is going to listen to you. Because they felt it. 
You know when somebody's talking who's been through it versus somebody just repeating shit. You know it. You can feel it. Why do you think my videos resonate? I'm not repeating shit. I've been through it. I know what works and what doesn't. I try shit. Oh, that worked. That didn't. Wooty woo. Now, does that mean that my information y'all never heard before? Probably not. Does that mean that my information is proprietary to me? No. But I can tell you what worked for me. And you know what I'm talking. Like dude asked earlier about my prep for my videos. I don't have to really prep. Why? Because I'm. this is all my real life. Once the camera comes on, I just start talking. No doubt. So I know playlists are definite edge. Analytically speaking, how many people actually use them for new music? Bro, I don't know, man. I don't know. All I know is this. You put your song on there, and motherfuckers going to listen to you. You're going to get more streams, and you're going to get paid. Y'all asking too many questions to try to take yourself out of the situation. People listen to music on Spotify. Spotify allows you to get on playlists. What more do you need to – What? it doesn't cost you any money to get on playlists. What the fuck more do you need to know? Inside of class, I dive deeper. What's there to analyze? No one's listening to your music now. What the fuck do you have to lose? Yo, no fans? You can't lose something you never had. You don't have no fans. Matthew Morrison, what's good, bro? It's been a minute, boss. Great to see you as always. Great hearing about the class being up. Hit, I missed that last showcase. Hope to catch the next one. No doubt, man. Class drops Friday. Appreciate that, bro. Dead ass. No, it's an echo. When you when you say I can't have an opinion, and then you quote somebody else. And say that's what they said. You're an echo, and that's what children do. Children repeat what other people say. I got a two year old. Everything she says is something else that she heard from us. Y'all don't know how to form your own opinions yet. There ain't much difference between a two year old and a fourteen year old. It ain't. I know you think you're way more advanced. You're not. You just hide it better. Until life really punches you in the motherfucking mouth as an adult. That's when you start forming your own opinions. Because, you know, everything you're saying is coming from somebody else. That's what society's telling you to do. Whether it's your parents, whether it's school, whether it's your principal, whether it's a teacher, whether it's somebody you look up to on social media, you know, and it might resonate a little bit. But until you get in a situation that's proprietary to you and you form an opinion about it, that's when you become an adult. It does have to become second nature. Absolutely. No question. You know, you y'all, I'm, I'm just telling you, or you can continue down the route that you're going and think you know shit. But I'm just telling you this right now. You know, most idiots don't know that they're idiots. They're delusional. They're in denial. They don't listen. And their life stays in the same fucking rut. Same rut. I remember when I was 14, you know, I was just like just looking around just all the time. I had my opinions about basketball. You know, that was about it. <laughs> like, I had very strong opinions about basketball and maybe video games. Like, not even strong opinions about music. You know, I, w I was still listening. I was still consuming, you know. Everybody talking about Jay-Z, Jay-Z. I'm like, bro, what the fuck is he talking about? Like, bro, we're in Indiana. Like, I don't know none of this New York vernacular. And I know your ass don't know it because I know your whole motherfucking family. And you ain't ever been in New York neither. So how the fuck you going to act like you understand this shit more than I do? 
All y'all in here lying. Everybody in fucking Indianapolis, all y'all lying. Y'all understand this shit? Y'all lying. Nigga, you just don't get it because of, of what? Nigga, you ain't sold though. Okay. And what the fuck they got to do with him talking about State Street? You been there? So what are you talking about? Now I got older. I'm like, okay. All right. There's the metaphor. There's the analogy. Okay. Ooh. That remind me of this situation when I, okay. Oh, yep. I felt that emotion when, and then, you know, you grow with the music because your life experiences. There's a reason why 444 didn't resonate with a young audience. Y'all ain't ready for it yet. You ain't had the life experience. There's, mm -hmm. there's some shit in there I wasn't ready for it yet. But I know because Jay-Z has rapped about stuff that helped me as I got older. And I listened like, you know, when you listen to some shit, like, oh, shit. I done heard this song 70 times, but I never heard that because you finally got the life experience to match the lyrics. I know 444 is going to be the exact same thing. You know, so when you're a child, like, just shut up. Because it's, it's going to get to the point where you are going to have to talk all the time, especially if you're a man, right? When you become a father or something like that, you're going to have to talk all the time, all the time. And so now you're at a time in your life where you can just shut up, just shut up. Exactly. You know, that's why I'll be admitting when I don't know shit. I don't know something I don't know. I'll sit here and be up here lying. Yeah, that's just some cornball shit. I will buy the class. I know you teach marketing strategy, but you also teach profit division. For example, properly dividing profit between artists and producer. What's there to what's there to fucking teach? You get a split sheet, you decide who gets what. It's not a lesson. It's up to you. Two thousand three, I was turning nineteen. Two thousand three was dope. <laughs> All the freshman nigga. I started college when I was seventeen, and that was two thousand two. And then yeah, that two thousand three, I turned I turned eighteen right before I went to college that summer before, and then right when the fall started, I turned eighteen, and then nineteen after that summer, two thousand three was lit. That shit was fun as fuck. If you don't give a damn, we don't give a fuck. That's when TI 24s. That's when TI really blew up. Man, that was a fun ass summer. God damn. 18, 19 is fun, man. That's a fun ass age. People act like it's not because you're not 21, you know, but but you you have the energy and the recklessness of a high schooler, but you got the freedom of a college student. How do you execute being an artist? You say it's easy to get signed, and I'm more interested in the long run of things than being smart doing this. Got a whole class, man. Got a whole class. Drops Friday. Go get your free lesson right now. You know, it's in the description box. Let's put it inside the comments, too. What did you learn during 2003? Shit, man. Hold on. Let me uh, let me put this tube buddy link in here. Y'all hit like. Y'all hit share. You know, y'all give some super chats, some super stickers, man. You, you niggas be being cheap. You know, Donate, nigga. Get money, nigga. You see the banner at the bottom? Do the cash app, too. Leo, appreciate the cash app. What I learned in 2003. Um, drank a lot of Captain Morgan that summer. That's when I probably started getting into dark liquor a little bit. I learned dark liquor was a much different drunk than light. Um, I learned at that time women very much responded to toxic energy. Like it, it 1000% solidified it for me. I learned that, you know, pretty much I can fuck whoever I wanted to. I put my mind to it. I can fuck whoever I want. Um, <clears throat> you know, I learned that niggas don't really understand sacrifice. That's as far as like, you know, an intellectual thing that really carried with me. Niggas don't understand sacrifice. That was the first time where I was sacrificing something and I was making more money than all my friends, you know, but they still didn't understand. They just didn't get it. I'm like, it's evident to me, you know. That's when I learned, too, 
how important having a father is. You know, of course I knew when I was growing up having my dad, but I, once I got out and I had been out for like a year out of my parents' house, you know, I learned my dad's knowledge like stayed with me all the time. I heard his voice all the time. I like, you know, it was something that was huge for me all the time. And the dudes that didn't have that, they would just do shit. I'll be looking at them like, what the fuck are you doing? Doesn't even make any sense. I'm still like that. Yes, little John. Yes, 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 little John. Three six. Ah, uh, nah, they nah. And Nelly neither. That was earlier. That was you know. And Nelly was still. Be, that was like the summer before. Nelly was definitely because Nellyville was the summer before. And then little uh three six. 97, 98, 99, 2000, 01, a little bit in 02, 03 some. I think Choices came out, you know, sipping on some scissor. No, that was earlier. Uh, she's a two-way freak, a two-way freak. Nick, ooh, maybe. And then, um, no, I'm sorry, I'm lying. Riding spinners. Riding spinners. That was 3-6. You not fuck with Timberlake? Timberlake, I mean, I ain't got no it's either way for him with me. I don't really care. You know, I, I don't think he appropriates culture like that. You know, he um I think he's been very consistent with who he is. Because he started off as a teenager. He was on Mickey Mouse Club. And if you watch Mickey Mouse Club back then, you know, like He's pretty much made the same type of music his whole life. Like, it's kind of like Eminem. You know, it's kind of like, how can you appropriate when you've made the same type of music your entire life? Like, it's not like Machine Gun Kelly. He was rapping. Now he's doing rock and shit. Like, JT didn't really do that. You know, he did fucking R&B, pop, nigga that had shit you could dance to. Nigga that had rhythm. Like, what the fuck? So let me be cheap. Life's a constant learning experience. You gotta know when to absorb info, when to use, and when to pass on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 2003 was the first time I went to a 21 over club, too. It was in Indianapolis, and it was a hood ass club. And I was like, this is what this is? Bro, that was a very, very bad. <laughs> Anybody from that that's of my age, you go know this club. It was called the government. And it was just like, you know, there's a hood club downtown. Them bitches ain't really look like shit. And I just was in there and I felt a very dark energy when I walked in there. Yeah, like, you know, I didn't belong in there. I didn't belong in there because I was underage, but I definitely didn't belong in there because those people weren't of my ilk. And I was used to going to hood parties, but like it, a hood, a hood party with 28, 29, 30 year olds is different than a hood party with 19, 20 year olds. It's it's a it's a different energy. You know, when niggas is like niggas mamas was in there and shit, aunties and older cousins and shit. You know what I mean? Different. This is nap. Like, like our hood clubs are hood. And so it, it wasn't a very pleasant. It, experience but you know I'm glad I'm glad top three regrets raw I don't have no regrets really don't I turned 21 2003 and same year still wasn't mature dog but I have fine memories yeah yeah man this 2003 was I feel like that's when like the cell phone game changed too that's when everybody had ringtones that's when everybody's phones was in color you know text messaging kind of started taking off a little bit at, at that time so yeah, G Unit wasn't even uh 2003. 50 had just dropped, so it wasn't even G Unit there. It was just 50. Like he he was talking about it, but Dipset wasn't. They came a little bit later. They 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 weren't. You know.
But you have some people in that from Chicago, the boy name. That you know them, that's pretty dope. I know a lot of Boyds. You know, it's kind of hard to like know motherfuckers based off that anymore. Rain Tones will come back. I think so too. I think they will too. Yeah, a little flip. Man. Solid team. Nah, you know. <clears throat> don't hire people who are close to you. You know what what um what J. Cole and Ebe have is is not normal. You know, y- your homeboy is usually not somewhat business savvy and that loyal to you. You know, it's it's not that's not that's not real. Your homeboys are probably gonna be the reason that you don't make it. But the mixtape, yeah, one nobody fucking with mixtapes like that and that like that. Like, and I'm not saying let me rephrase that. We wasn't fucking with East Coast mixtapes like that. We was fucking with chops and screwed shit. If that summer and that, if your shit wasn't chops and screwed, it wasn't getting played. Mixtape. In the club, different, but mixtape. And in the club, like you had to be something motherfucker could dance to. Hey man, listen, if you ask one more dumbass, groupy ass question, I'm just gonna block you, dude. No one cares, man. There's so many channels out here, so many social media people you can go talk to. That's that all they do is talk about like dumb groupy shit. This is not one of the places. Go over there. Yeah, 2003 was weird. 2004 was a shift. 2003, I felt like I was on vacation. 2004, I was like, oh, this is real. In 2005, I turned 21. You know. What do you look for in a team? I talk about that inside my class. Must be new here. Got to be, CC. What are the top five lessons you learned so far about the music? I don't have no list, man. I don't, I don't have a list like that. Ain't no top five lessons. I got a class that gives you everything I learned. You know, I have a class. Sign up for the class. Get everything I learned that made me some money. You know, that's 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 what it is. I mean, it ain't no top five. I mean, that's a whole goddamn fucking dissertation. Swisher House. We we were on Swisher House way before that. You know, we, we were on Swisher House probably oh one. I know I, I know in two thousand a little bit, but definitely oh one is when like me and my home quietly I I to be honest, man, I, I think I first heard DJ Michael Watts in ninety nine. I'm not bullshit. I think I was a sophomore in high school. When I first heard DJ Michael Watts. I was in Indianapolis. Indianapolis was huge on that chopped and screwed shit. It was like Houston, Memphis, Nap. People think that they have distribution. That means one meal. No, there's different licenses you need, dummy. What's your occupation? I don't have no occupation. I do what the fuck I want to do every day. Do you think it's easier to become an artist in the industry or become a ghostwriter? Artist to me, I mean, you put out your own music. You a ghostwriter, you need motherfucker to put out the music for you. you ain't nobody about to be, ain't nobody about to have nobody ghostwrite for them that wasn't an artist. Niggas like, well, I write those songs. Where they at? And, you know, people don't want to share that publishing. They don't want to share them royalties. So. You know, there's there's a reason why a lot of stuff doesn't work for people. And the reason being is because niggas just don't take it serious. Like y'all don't take it seriously. You caught up on the whole groupie aspect. Like, you know, a lot of you niggas be lying to yourself. You got to admit if you're a groupie or not. 
And if you a groupie, you, this shit ain't going to work for you. You know, or you can go through the whole groupie lane. But if you a nigga that's trying to do this because you want to be in the same room as 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 Drake, like, nigga, you, you, you weird, bro. It ain't going to work for you. Or if it is, you're going to get robbed or, you know, you're going to get set up. You survive off doing nothing but what you want. How's that good on your play clothing? If 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 you're that stupid to not Google me to figure out what the fuck it is I do and how I make money, you don't need to be in here. You know? So, like I said, I do what the fuck I want to do every day. If you can't figure out how that makes money, then you don't need to be in here. You do. That's exactly what it is. You got to do this shit because you love it and you love the freedom. You know? Anybody that wants to be free, you'll figure out a way to make money. People that don't want to be free, they're always going to be working for somebody. You know, that's why I made the class. It's like, it's for niggas that want to be free. You get everything you need to do. It's a matter if you want to do it or not. Oh, that's a good question. <sighs> Any advice about first time stepping into a studio? Um, you know, I'm just giving you my personal experiences. You know, I had never. Recorded music before in my life. Even when I recorded at home, I, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, like at all. Like I didn't like I had a. I had like a podcast mic with the USB plugged into logic, like directly into the computer. You know, I didn't know anything about like, you know, fucking cutting in. And I didn't know anything about reverb or delay. I didn't know what the fuck mixing was. I knew nothing. I knew nothing, nothing, you know. And so I was just rapping over these instrumentals that I made. And I'm just like, why don't it sound like the other shit that everybody else makes? <laughs> like, I had no idea. I'm 29 at the time, by, by the way. And so I was like, all right, I got to go. I got to go to a studio because they know how to do that shit. And I was really concerned about, you know, being with somebody who was serious. And the first person I worked with. I'll never forget. It was the Columbia College of Chicago. He had access to like this very, very nice studio. And, you know, he had never mixed rap vocals in his life. He didn't know how to like cut in. He didn't know like how to do the hooks. He didn't know shit. And I was like, all right, there goes that. So then I had to find somebody that knew how to mix rap vocals. So then I found this hood ass studio on the west side of Chicago, the nigga had the mic hanging from a hanger inside of like a little, it wasn't even a closet. It was like, a, I don't know what the fuck it was, you know, but he knew how to add reverb and shit. I was like, damn, that sound way better than other dude, you know, but I still didn't know. And he was trying to rush, try to get as many people in as you, as you possibly can. And I feel like when I came into the studio, I feel like this nigga had a pistol out. I feel like he did. I'm like ninety percent positive, you know. Um, yeah, he definitely did. It's, I'm just thinking, like going back, going through the memories. So I didn't know because he wasn't teaching me neither. And then I wanted to. Then that dude kept bullshitting. I like recording with him, but he kept bullshitting. I remember his name was Chris. He kept bullshitting. And I'm just like, all right, I gotta find somebody. So I found this other studio. This other dude named Chris that lived down that had a studio downtown, and it was more professional. But he ain't really no shit neither. He his personality is kind of like spiky, you know. He wasn't very warm, and you know he he wasn't trying to teach. He he just was like he was in it for the money, you know. And he wasn't giving me what I knew neither. So I say all that for this, you know. It took me a while to find people that were okay, and even when I got to people that were okay, I needed someone who could really guide me on how to record. And no one was really doing that. So, you know, when you go into the studio, you need to kind of have an idea of what it is you want to do. But because it's your first time, it's like, think about this, the first time that you ever hooped. You didn't hoop like LeBron. You didn't hoop like Mike. You didn't hoop like Kobe. You ain't hoop like Trey Young. Nigga, you didn't hoop like Taj Gibson. Nigga, you hoop like a motherfucker that never played basketball before. 
That's how it's going to be when you go into the studio. So keep your expectations low and use that as a learning experience. <clears throat> you just want us to pay you for your knowledge. Yes, you're exactly fucking right. 1,000%. Yeah. Six years of experience, you get it for six weeks for $2,000. Or you can do like I did and spend the next six years teaching yourself. It's up to you. Bro, I don't know. You this, These hypothetical situations are fucking stupid. Listen, if, if y'all want to sign to a label, I'm not the person for you. So I don't care about none of that record label shit. If you want to sign to a label, you want to play the hypothetical label game, I'm not the person for you. Is age a huge factor in the industry? I don't think it matters. If you're talented, you should pop at some point. Talent doesn't mean shit. Age don't mean shit neither. Damn, homie, you don't switch out to 99. I'm surprised how far underground Texas rap was heard. Yeah. No, for real. Like, it was... It had to be family. Like, it had to be people's family brought that shit to nap, and it just resonated with us, bro. I, I'm I'm not bullshitting. Like, you know, we was on Chops and Screw shit early. I thought everybody was on that shit. Like, when Mike Jones and them went mainstream, like, I'm like, nigga, ain't been around for like five years. Like, the, uh, not back then, which song was it? It was something else. Like, bro, I've been hearing that forever. Forever. Leo, appreciate the $5. I was like, bro, I've been hearing that song forever. Chicago Steel Culture is a hustle. All of it's hustle, you know? All of it. All of it's hustle, bro. You just got to know what you want to do. Talent doesn't mean shit. It's exactly like I fucking said. Talent doesn't mean shit. Bro, you can walk into any church in America, and there's going to be six, seven, eight, ten people in there that can sing they fucking ass off. I mean, like, you can put them in a studio right now with a dope-ass engineer. They're they going to have some amazing vocals. Talented as fuck. Don't mean shit. You can walk into any club in America. You can walk into any gym. And niggas is hooping. And ask every nigga in there, can you rap? There's going to be at least one nigga in there that has a verse on the top of his head. He starts spitting. Like, shit. That was dope. Don't mean shit. It don't mean nothing. It means nothing. Everybody talented. Dime a dozen. Takes so much more. Talent is like nothing. 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 You can make a song. You can make a song catchy. You can say some creative shit. It's nothing. You got to know how to market. No, I don't. Because I don't give a fuck. If you want to sign a contract and you don't hire a lawyer, you deserve to get fucked over. So. Post every day. I don't edit my videos. I have a team. They bombed him. How old are you, man? What are you? How, how, how old are you? I know you're white. Like, you don't have to answer that. I, gangster, you're white. How old are you? Because this, this, this motherfucker is asking the same questions. He's 14. But at least he admitted he's 14. So how old are you, white boy? How are you? Yep, tipping on four folds. That's what it was. Yep, yep, yep. That's what it was. Because, like, that's exactly what it was. Because I'm watching the music video. Like, did this song got a video? And I, and you knew back then, because they had BT Uncut and all this other shit. Like, you knew when it was an underground video versus, like, a commercial video. I'm like, this video seems extremely polished. This has all been around for a minute. Yeah, tipping on faux foes. Rap, that's exactly what it was. 
Man, that was my shit. Jesus. Man. 15. There, there you go. Okay. Thank you. Like, but stop, stop. Just, you know, once again, you and the other dude, like, y'all just need to just stop talking. You know, no, we you're, you're not adding any value. Okay. Just you stop talking. When people support popularity, not talent. What you shaking your head for? People support what they like. They support what gets in front of them and what they like. Talent ain't enough. I know a lot of talented dumb motherfuckers. You better have some knowledge that talent. It's execution. Talent don't mean shit. It don't matter what it is. Basketball, music, you know, being a pastor, sales, marketing, construction, nigga, it doesn't mean shit. Entrepreneurship, talent don't mean shit. What you were born with is such a small piece of the puzzle. You got to fucking be on this shit every fucking day. Y'all hit share. Y'all hit like. Got 101 people in here. Got the class dropping. Music marketing class. How to market your music on social media. So I keep telling y'all talent don't mean nothing because you got to know how to market. If you don't know how to market, man, you don't stand a chance. You're not, you're not even, it don't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. I don't care how talented you are, how well you sing, how well your shit's mixed, how dope the song is. If you don't have, if you don't know how to market, it doesn't fucking matter. You don't exist. You don't know how to market, you don't exist. And that's why I made the class how to market your music on social media. Because social media is the number one marketing platform in the world. It's free at this point right now. And I learned how to market on there, which is why I've been able to do what I've done. I do this shit full time. You know, so if you're somebody that wants to do this full time, you need to sign up for the class and get that free lesson. Go put your email in. Get that free lesson. Pocket full of songs, UGK. Independent artists step up. Y'all business acumen on negotiate leverage people. You know, yeah, pastors. I mean, there's some people who like have an outstanding gift of speaking well and have the great timing of, you know, there's, there's a science to everything and there's a science to preaching. There's a science. Saints. I ain't been to church in so long, but like grew up in the, in the church. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter nine, verse 16. When you have it, let me hear you say, amen. 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 Sister Johnson, I like that hat you got over here. <laughs> a whole church laugh and shit. And God's word says, the Lord, I mean, there's, there's a science to it, you know? And then when he starts off, he starts off reading from the Bible and he has a very low voice and a quiet voice and starts elaborating on it. And then he starts putting in life analogies. And based on the type of preacher that he is, he might use pop culture. He might use older things that we don't know based on the audience. He has to give it to that demographic. He might get off topic. He might bring in some more verses. It, I, every, you know, but at, it's a crescendo. And as he's preaching, you hear he gets louder and he gets louder. <laughs> he start breathing all out and shit in the <laughs> organ, then the drums and it. It's a whole it's it's a whole show. There's a science to it. And there are some people who are naturally gifted at that. They can do that in a sleep, but they're lazy. So therefore, that's why the church got eight members. You know? And you get a nigga like T D Jakes. He had the gift and he wasn't lazy. Because town shall be overpopular. It, who cares? What do you mean should? Who are you to decide that? And why do you give a fuck? Just listen to people you want to listen to. Someone else being popular doesn't change your listening experience to who you want to listen to. Why do you care? Go to class, bro. 
Trauma Toast, appreciate you. Thank you. Churches market their asses off. They do outstanding job. I see a channel growing, Dorian, big views coming in. You on your meet Kevin. I'm not even close to him yet. He That motherfucker, man. I was thinking about him earlier. I don't even watch his shit. I just be going just to see, like, I'm just enamored with the amount of content he puts out. He, I'm not subscribed. I don't watch his shit. But, like, I have been on his, I'm like, I have been on his channel. Like, good Lord. Like, I'm not even close to that. Oh my shit. T Jakes is dope. Eddie Brown good too. You know, but it's 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 the same gift. Like, like what I'm doing, right? It's kind of a form of that a little bit. Not nearly at the, you know, with the religious aspect or anything like that, or even like the the blind sheep or the worship aspect. It's not like that. But if I wanted to go into that, like I would dominate that shit. I'm I'm just that's just not who I am. I don't believe in it, you know. You know, well, the problem is, is, is you're judging them when they're living out their dreams and you're not. Why do you give a fuck? Like, why you got to call them bums? The fuck they do to you? You know, in, in all actuality, if you look at their life and, and you look at yours, who's the bum? It's an opinion and no one cares about your opinion. You're upset because people like music you don't like. Like literally, is is I don't think there is a more meaningless conversation or opinion that exists in the world. Who people are personally listening to in their headphones, not your headphones, in in their headphones, mine in their own business. You are shaking your head. Because you don't think that that person is talented enough for somebody to be listening to them. Like, could there be an even more dumb opinion? I don't think so. It's such a waste of energy. And you know why this shit is, this shit is irritating? Because there's a whole industry based on this ignorance. Who cares? Drake sucks. Do you think Drake cares? Do you think his millions of fans care? Kendrick sucks. Do you think his millions of fans care? Cole, Kanye, J they don't care. Little Pump. Do you think his fans care? So why are you talking? I just told you, man. You post every day. I forgot about them ties. Creflo Dollar was born to be a, a prosperity pe uh, preacher. I don't know what smart contracts going to do. You know, Ethereum got a lot of work. I'm not upset. You shook your head. You put shake in my damn head for oh, because talent over, over popularity. What's there to shake your head about? Who cares? And you using exclamation points. Who cares? It's a it's a pointless combo. No one's talking about that, but but you. If you think I'm rude, you can leave. My energy is consistent. I don't deal with dumb people. You know, if you want to sit around and talk about that shit, there's so many places on the internet where you can go and debate talent over popularity, and y'all will talk about it for hours. And this ain't one of them places. It's just like crazy. You know, once again, 14 year old, you like the Kevin Samuels of music. I'm out to Dorian Clark. I ain't no other nigga. You, you see how you're a child. You see something you immediately got to compare. Who's that person? What they do? <laughs> like. You got to put something inside of a box. Because if things aren't in a box, you can't comprehend it yet because you don't have your own independent thoughts. That's why I keep telling you, stop talking and listen. Exactly. 
They are. Okay, whatever you want to tell yourself, I'm I'm done with you. I didn't bring up nothing about that. I was talking about how talent doesn't matter because I answered somebody's question. You can't fucking read. Someone said something about talent. I said talent doesn't matter. And then somebody else said talent over popularity. I never said nothing about that. So you can shut the fuck up. I don't understand y'all. Like, you know, these these meaningless, pointless conversations have done what for you? Like, what do they do? You know, it's like when niggas argue LeBron versus Jordan. What, what does that do? Does that change Michael Jordan's career and legacy? Does that change LeBron's career and legacy? Does that change the money that's in their pocket? Does that change your career and legacy? Does that change the money that's in your pocket? Who cares? Who cares? I said it should. Once again, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? What does that do? There's so many things that are going on in the world right now. There's so many things that are going on in y'all lives right now. There's so many ways for you to better your life, enrich your life, enrich your family's life, protect the people you love, give yourself financial freedom, give yourself a healthy mental health situation, which a lot of y'all don't have, and you worried about dumb shit. This is why the shade room is as popular as it is, because the niggas like y'all. Go over there. Go talk about that shit. It's, it's idiocy. Y'all are caught in a rut. It's a hamster wheel of idiocy that leads you to nowhere. And the things you need to be focused on, like how to market your music, how to collect your, your mechanical royalties, how to collect your publishing. Is my song registered with Song, song Trust and Sound Exchange? How to market my music? How to have a consistent social media strategy? How to make money from YouTube when I'm not even awake? Y'all don't care about that. Well, I'll, I'll take that back. Y'all say y'all care about it, but you don't put the effort or energy into that. You'd rather argue about who shouldn't be as popular. What the f what Are you kidding me? That's like going to high school and being like, she shouldn't be homecoming queen. Her is more popular than her. Who cares? Do y'all care about who's a homecoming queen when y'all was in high school? Do, do y'all care about that now? Do y'all care about who the prom king was? So why the fuck do you care about who's the most popular rapper? And that's your problem. I ain't got shit else to do. That is your problem. Your life is so worthless and so meaningless to you that in your mind, you ain't got shit else to do at 2 o'clock in the morning to talk about this. You just answered your own question. You just analyze yourself. There you go. Just just broke mentality. It's a broke, broken, fucked up mentality. It's just it's just stupid. It's pure idiocy. Pure idiocy. And they're delusional. Don't even know. James Sidnor, appreciate the twenty dollars, man. Thank you. No doubt. Once again, you don't know how this works. I'm not doing anything. I'm making money right now. This is content for me. I posted a link in my class here eight times. I'm going to get sales from this. Everything I do is strategic. Once this video is done, I put the ads in here. And it makes me money forever. And that goes on to my daughter. This is generational wealth in real time. But you're so fucking stupid that you're focused on dumb shit. You don't even know how any of this works. You're in your bed looking at me. I'm making money. Forever. This is evergreen content. You know what's even more funny? I make videos about this and tell you how to do it yourself. Dumb. I ain't throwing hands at nobody. <laughs> Days are over. Well, I'll take that back. Let me rephrase that. If somebody gets me to that point, you know, it's, you know. But look at all this shit you got to do to, to get money. What? Things I was normally doing, having conversations. I've been up at two in the morning my entire life. Like, what are you talking about? I don't understand.
Y'all know I'm not fighting. I don't think I've ever been mad on social media, to be honest. I've been serious. I never. I don't think I've ever been mad. Yeah, it's like real estate, passive income. I don't know how many times I said passive income on your show. For real. All this, every piece of content, especially on, on YouTube, it's passive income. Makes money. Makes money when I'm asleep. Just doing nothing. Like I said, like I'm, I worked on YouTube probably 13 hours last month and made $9,000. And that's not even my largest stream of revenue. Just doesn't matter. You know, just say, hey, do what you want. How do I properly market my song on Instagram? Do you recommend Instagram ads? You're 15. You know, you know what I recommend you do? I recommend you become the best engineer for your music as you possibly can right now. Don't worry about marketing right now. You know, you you got the time. It's summertime. You know, you need to, if you got garage band, really learn how to use that. If you got $200, you want to upgrade to Logic. I think Logic's still 200 You know, upgrade to that. Learn that. Don't worry about marketing right now. Learn how to, at bare minimum, mix and master your own vocals. Do that. That, that marketing stuff, you know, it, it changes so much that it puts you in a in a position where you ain't got to worry about it no more. Because, like, if you if you really focused on just marketing when you were like five years ago, six years ago, it's changed so much. It's like, damn, I had to relearn. And so and you're not in a position right now where you can consistently teach yourself shit. We can consistently keep changing with the times, unless it's a part of your everyday life. You know, like Facebook and Instagram ads are way different than they were five years ago. And unless you had time to really invest and learn all that, you know, you get caught off guard. But mixing your own music, you know, once you learn the basic principles and you train your ear, now it's just about using the software to get you what you want. Just fire artists make music that people like or that they themselves like. You need to make music that you like, but understand who your audience is and how they consume music. Also, for family, they don't demonetize the videos. Some they do, you know, but majority they don't. We talked about crypto a little bit. Nine thousand dollars ain't no money, bro. Yeah, of course you're right. It's not cool. Well, if there's no money, then then why are you here? If I'm wasting my time, then why? Then if I'm wasting my time, what are you doing? I'm definitely not mad. You know, yeah. Like I said, y'all ain't never seen me mad on social media ever. <laughs> it's like, you know, is this? It's not. It's, it's not mad. Like I'm not ever mad. I'm considering learning how to make my own beats, my my channel. I run a custom wrestling show. I want to interest easy for my wrestlers. Get on it, man. There's a lot of people out here teach you how, how to make beats, you know. I say it matters what interface you're used to, but I feel like Mac is the industry standard, so... You can start off with GarageBand. There's a lot of people that teach you how to use GarageBand and Logic, I feel like, is the natural, the most easiest one, at least for me. You know, it looks the best to me. It's very easy. There's a lot of tutorials. It's, it's, it's the Apple one, so. You know, the only way... <clears throat> You can make money doing anything. Can you sustain? I don't know. You know, you have to be able to prove what you're talking about. You know, like I can talk about business and entrepreneurship and music marketing and, you know, investing and shit because I can prove it. But like, if you can't prove it, how long do you think people are going to listen to you? And going back to what I said earlier, and for some of the people who are in here, they'll listen to you because they're idiots. No, but majority of people won't. So you gotta figure that out. Yeah, I'm not mixing master for nobody. Don't care about AMC. 
nine thousand. Nine thousand for them is a is a lot too, but they're I mean, they're idiots. He said it wasn't only revenue stream. He could have another nine K come in from somewhere else. It's, you know, you you two. I'll just say this. You know, last year was the most money I ever made in my life, and um, I didn't start making money from YouTube last year until October. I, I wasn't even thinking about YouTube. Just didn't care. And now I'm all in all last month in YouTube when you count two buddy and stuff, like I made almost eleven thousand dollars. You know, and and I wasn't I wasn't even that wasn't even a, a thing a year ago. I didn't even care. And to be honest, like eleven thousand dollars is like, you know, all right, pay that, do that, whoop de whoop, thanks. You know, it's it's not at one time I used to make four hundred dollars every two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a human calculator. And now I look at 11000 a month. And it's just like, yeah, we could do more. You know, it's it's just you put out content. You make money. Very easy. How important is spiritual aspect to everything you do? You have to be centered. You have to find a way to keep yourself centered. Everybody, how they center themselves is, is different. It's not going to be the same for every person. And so for me, you know, I make sure I'm centered daily. If I feel myself leaning any other in left or right or whatever, you know, I let the people around me know. Hey, you know, or I put my phone down or, you know, I, I go take a nap sometimes, you know, some most times I'm taking a nap because I'm tired. Sometimes I take a nap to hide. I'm just not in the mood, you know, and I don't want to <clears throat> when I feel really negative and it, the negative emotion is at the top of all the emotions I'm feeling. I separate myself from people because I don't want to spread my negative shit to them. I got a class, how to market your music on social media. You know, you get your free lesson last two, buddy. You get your free lesson right, right there. I go over my YouTube strategy. I'm going to definitely have a YouTube class down the line. I don't know when. So don't ask about it by just letting y'all know we have a YouTube class. But, you know, as an artist, I talk about what you should do on YouTube and how that shit works. No, I don't watch none of that shit. Well, yeah, I got two, buddy. Thanks to you. Definitely a huge help. I got a star pack. Two, buddy. It's dope, man. It's really dope. Yeah, I'm going to have a YouTube class. Meme rapping is evergreen. Uh, no. All right. I'm not rapping over nothing right now. You know, it's um you know, you y'all gotta dive out of this energy. And I and I keep telling y'all this and it's gonna happen. You know, eventually it's gonna get to the point where I'm just not gonna be making content like that, you know, and this is going to be, there's going to be a huge gap. It's going to be a huge hole missing because I don't, there are some people who are doing what I'm doing, but you know, majority of people are shifting or they don't have the longevity or they don't have the social proof. You know? And so because of that, when I decide that I'm not going to be doing this shit as often, you know, it's going to be a huge gap missing. Like it's going to be massive, yo. You know, it's just like so I I keep telling y'all I wish I had me when I was coming up. That's why I made the class. You know, I wish I had this class when I first started because it would have saved me thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, probably a hundred thousand dollars, to be honest. And it would have saved me time and a lot of headaches, a lot of heartache, too, you know, so. That's why I'm going to continue to talk about it. That's why I made it. That's why y'all absolutely need to sign up for it. Because if you're serious about making music, this is what you need to do. So like the class is going to take you where you need to go. It's going to lay the foundation for you. Like, okay, I have a realistic plan. I have a strategy. I know what I'm trying to do. I have goals. I know how to reach them. I know what I can and can't do. I know what's possible. You know, charting on iTunes 
is not nearly as difficult as you think it is. There's 200 albums that chart on there. 200. You can get on there. You take this class, you do the fuck I tell you to do, you're going to get on that chart. In, in some country, you're going to get on that chart. And if you chart on iTunes, right, that's going to increase the likelihood of you getting verified. And that increases the likelihood of you getting verified. A lot of y'all place a lot of emphasis on that. That's going to change how people perceive your social media content, change how people perceive your brand. It allows you to make more money. You know, there's everything that I talk about inside this class, you know, I've done. I don't talk about nothing I never done. I talk about all shit I've done. I talk every link in there we use or have used, you know, every service. The class is full of affiliate links, of course, but there's services I use. There's not services I'm not using, you know, so you absolutely need to just dedicate yourself to it. And if you somebody wants to focus on negative shit, it's just not going to work for you, you know? What do you say a career longevity contains? I mean, based on what I've seen, you know, because I don't think I've had a long enough career in anything, but based off what I've seen, you got to adapt. You got to adapt. Yeah, I'll probably do that video eventually. That shirt came across you in March or April 2020. Your views were less than 100 on some video. Yeah, I wasn't even. I didn't start getting serious on YouTube to like July, August 2020. Yeah, so you're right. So you're right. Do you see yourself growing a channel to the point of putting other face on camera? I, I don't know. You, you know, it's it's I don't know. When you start dealing with other people, you deal with their bullshit. And I don't like dealing with other people's bullshit. You know, most people aren't serious. Most people don't have a work ethic. Most people aren't dedicated. So because of that, it makes it very difficult for me to trust them. And I don't want them to represent my brand. Like right now, everything is on me, you know. But when you start adding other people, like they got to deliver. And, you know, I don't know if the audience will, will respond to them. My audience is attuned to me, you know, and that wasn't purposeful. But I learned early, like, yo, it, there's a certain type of person that likes me, a certain type of person that wants to fuck with me, a certain type of person that doesn't like me, you know. And the people that don't like me, I make sure that their ass gets the fuck out. People that do like me, I make sure that I let them know, you know. So, like, I don't know if my audience is going to like you. I'm not about to be, be putting your ass on videos. I don't know if they like you. So, you independent, how do you get paid for shows? The fuck you need shows for? You need to make money online first. You make money online, you'll be able to get money for shows. When I want... It's not hard. You're making excuses, dude. Class is two Gs, two thousand dollars. What do you think your projected sales service some of the other class? I don't know. No idea. I don't project sales. <laughs> I think that's the biggest crock of shit. <laughs> it's like it's anyone projecting sales. You just try to finesse a bank out of somebody. That's it. You have no idea, dude. You, you don't know. You don't know. You can look at patterns. And guess, but like you, you still don't know. You can project all you want to based on the patterns in history. But like I said, you don't know how someone's audience is responding to them. A great example of that is, is J. Cole, his first album. Rock Nation said he would do 70 to 80,000 in sales the first week. He said he was on the call with them the week his album was coming out. Like that's our newest artist, J. Cole. We're projecting 70 to 80K. He was like, 70 to 80K? He's like, man, I don't know the business like they like, but that don't, that don't feel right. Like, I don't know the numbers. I ain't been in this, but that don't feel right. This nigga did 218,000 the first week. He had no fucking idea. They didn't realize what his mixtapes was doing. They didn't realize that he was selling out them shows. They didn't know. They had no idea. None. This is a label with all the metrics, all the patterns, all the history, all these lawyers and accountants and, you know, business analysts. You were off by that much? They don't know shit. Why? Because you don't know. You don't fucking know. No idea. 
this is what you need to know. How much does it cost me to, to promote how I want to promote? Will I make that money back? If it's a low enough number of sales where you to break even, that's all I need to worry about. Everything else is the bonus after that. You know, like for me with the true support campaign, like I knew the amount of money we had spent. So I was like, you know, if I make $3,000, $4,000 back, I'm good. So that means if I sell 400, 500 copies, I'm good. And we sold like 800 or 900 or something. Will you spend more time working, making money, get out of debt, or spending more time going to YouTube channel? That's a really good question. I don't know. I can't answer that for you. Me personally, I don't know. It matters what kind of job I had and what I was doing at that time and, and how much time I could dedicate to making videos. So I don't know. How do you keep track of stream money and the percentages? Everything go through distro kid. What they send me is what I get. That's real. You do serve a huge gap in the YouTube space. Most people on camera these days have too many relationships. They try to protect, keep it to PC. You bring that raw shit back. And that's very true. You know, a lot of niggas on here are scared. Because once the motherfuckers start paying you, like, you know, you scared. How should I make the content? I ain't got time for all that shit. But yeah, I mean, you don't you don't know. Like you you have no idea. You have no idea. And I don't like expectations anyway because never meets them. Because in my opinion, I think everybody should buy the shit. But I know that's not realistic. So it's like, okay, we're going to sell one. <laughs> like, you don't even like put that energy out there. So it's like, okay, well, what's the realistic number? Who fucking cares, man. You know, it's a digital class. It's evergreen content. Fuck it. They do. Absolutely. They will. Much love, bro. I watch your YouTube every day while I'm at work. Keep doing you. Appreciate you watching it, man. You an artist? Where you from? Y'all hit like, hit share. You know, Twitter, Facebook, all that. You know, go and get your free lesson for the class. It's in there. It's inside the comments right now. Go do that. Also, you don't have TubeBuddy. Go install TubeBuddy right now. Get their top license for free. It's, you want to grow your YouTube is what you need, you need to do. Get on that right now. Dope shit. But, you know, you got to figure it out. We got a launch party on Friday, too, for the class. So make sure that you come to the launch party on Friday. It's already up on my live. Set the reminder. The fuck is she down there doing? Set the reminder. <laughs> Go ahead and, and do that, um, and you'll be good. You'll be good. You know, I'm going to answer a lot of questions inside of there. We got people that come in, say they're going to buy the class. It's going to be great. So what's the ultimate marketing push for a single? I don't know. But that's why I made the class. You know, you need to figure that out. I can't answer that for you. Your live will suggest I'm very glad I clicked on the good shit, brother. No doubt, man. Hit subscribe, man. Welcome to the pond. You know, follow me on IG. You know, I'm posting consistently. Two buddies, the only problem is that it slows down your YouTube. That's just not true at all. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you doing. <laughs> I don't know what you talking about. That's not true at all. I don't know what you talking about, what you doing. That's just not even remotely true whatsoever. You know, TubeBuddy is the reason my shit sped the fuck up. And that's real. You know, that is, I, like, I literally see it. Like, I'll change tags. And within hours, I'll see that video get way more comments. It's, it's, I don't know. What the hell are you talking about? Hope so, man. Hope so. What do you think is the most sustainable hip-hop style over a long period of time? Trends put aside. You know, there's two sustainable styles of hip-hop. You either got to have music people can dance to, or you got to have music that makes people think. You know. Both of those are emotions. Does the music make you move? Does the music make you sit with your thoughts? That's what you got to do. You know. What up, Dallas? Yeah, people all over the country, all over the world, man. I fuck with Dallas heavy. No, that's what that's what TubeBuddy is. 
That's what Two Buddy is. That's what Two Buddy does. I'm sorry. That's I'm got me thinking about Two Buddy. He said slow shit down. It's just, it's just not true. But that's what hip hop is. You know, it's either got to make you move or got to make you think. But it's it's going to make you feel. Hip hop is absolutely gonna make you feel something. It's like the one genre of music that you can't ignore the emotion it makes you feel. Like you very rarely hear a rap song and like it's just on in the in the in the background and you don't feel nothing. That that rarely happens. Like you feel something. I ain't saying everything you feel is positive, but you feel something. Now, if you can make people dance and think at the same time, yeah, your name's Drake. I got a video, how to get plaques as an independent artist. Go watch it. That's, you know, that's the goal. If you can make people dance and think, you got them. Jay-Z did that. Uh, Kanye kind of did that. You know, Drake, Drake's, Drake's the master at that. I, I don't think anybody in the history of music has mastered that like him. Maybe Michael Jackson. You know, maybe Michael Jackson, but that's that's what it is. Well, it's, it's even when you listen to a song. I was listening to Nonstop the other day. It's probably one of my favorite Drake songs, and you know, it's just. That, that beat, I just love the way it makes you feel, even with the Take Keith tag. And I'm listening to him rap and the shit he's saying. It's like he was talking calculated, coded shit. Like he was talking shit. I'm like, damn. Like he, he thought that out. And when you listen to it, it's like he didn't really think this out. He just had fun. No, he thought that out. You know, and it's it's like if you in that mode, like a shit talking mode, like you need a confidence boost. Song makes you do it. If a DJ plays that inside the club, you know, especially when it came out, niggas was singing that shit. Where you at with it? Watch basketball every day. You know, and that's what it is. So if 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 you can do those, you make people dance, make people think, you got a chance. That's why people be saying shit's whack. It's like that song had a goal. Did it accomplish the goal? What are you talking about? Yeah, he's yeah, he's you know, he's very calculated. Very, very. You you can really tell like he. That's why when people don't be having them like on their list and shit, he don't write. And shit. It's it's like, nigga, if if you think that at at this point, I ain't saying motherfucker ain't never got no help, you know. But if you think that he ain't wrote ninety eight percent of his shit, like come on, dog. <laughs> like, it's like okay, let's say he ain't wrote half his shit. Let's just take away half his catalog. That nigga still. Still got like 200 hits. It, it, it's just, it's weird. It, it's very weird how people perceive him. It's like y'all don't recognize what's going on. And you know what's sad? People ain't going to recognize it un, un, until he's gone. They're, they're not going to truly recognize it. What's good, bro? His best project, my favorite project of his, if you're reading this, is, is too late. That's my favorite project. You know, ghostwriting question. He he's wrote so much shit. He has so much material. Nigga, ain't nobody ghostwriting that much. There's just no fucking way. I like guess it's, it's there's just no way. Because if, if you are that, Dr. Dre is dependent on ghostwriters. That's why he doesn't put out music that often. Because Dr. Dre says he goes to the studio every single day. He's put out three albums in his entire career. 
He has to depend on other people to write. Look at the amount of music Drake's put out. No way. Like I said, I ain't saying he never had help, but I'm just saying this. It's, you know, take away what his help did. He He's still where he is. So, okay, take that song away. Take, take, going home. All right, take it away. What does that do to Drake's legacy? Not a fucking thing. You see what I'm saying? You could do that with like 50 songs of his, and it won't matter. At a certain point, you got to realize that a motherfucker is just killing it. Like some of y'all hate LeBron. You're 18. He still is arguably the best player in the world. At a certain point, he's got to be like, fuck it. That motherfucker's just goaded. Yeah, pop artists, they get all types of help. It is. I mean, and that's another thing, too. You know, if he was really using ghost writers at the level people act like he is, those ghost writers would be writing so much shit for everybody else that Drake would have got watered down. And they wouldn't be writing for Drake as much because, like, there's artists that we, like, your French Montana. French Montana would empty out his whole bank account for them ghost writers if he could get Drake's consistency. And I don't even know French like that, but I'm just saying, like, I'm just using him as an example. You know, it's it's I just don't know how you can be a fan of rap and even like say that. I when when someone says Drake isn't one of the best, I don't even lose lose respect. I just don't want to hear nothing else that you have to say. Like you have no no credibility about rap. You know, it's it's kind of like saying that, you know, LeBron isn't one of the best. Or, or Steph Curry isn't one of the best. It's like, what? what? All right. I mean, ain't, ain't, there's, there's nothing for, for me to talk about, dude. But hip-hop isn't, isn't competitive, and that's the thing. What's, what's the competition? Somebody tell me what the competition in hip-hop is and who won. And what did they get for winning? I don't I don't live in a world of hypotheticals, so I don't really care. That's that's not a that's not a trophy. That's from Billboard. Billboard doesn't give a fuck about anything but selling magazines. It's not a trophy. You know, that's not a it's not a it's not a trophy. Popularity. So Post Malone is the greatest rapper out right now. He's top ten all time. MC Hammer, Vanilla Ice, that's, that's not a measurement neither. Once again, you're talking about hypotheticals. Who cares? I'm talking about real, real shit. Impact, no. It's, it, that's what I'm saying. Like there, you see how all y'all are fucking talking. There is no trophy. There is no who's the best because you can't measure it. You know why? Because it's art. Nowhere else do they do this except where black people dominate. Do they pit us against each other? Nowhere else. I'm from Indianapolis. I was born in '84. Peyton Manning got drafted to the Colts when I was in eighth grade. Tom Brady got drafted to the Patriots when I was a sophomore in high school. I went to school at IU, Indiana. Peyton Manning and Tom Brady played each other at least once a year for like 11 years straight. They were hands down the two best quarterbacks in the NFL. They were hands down two of the best quarterbacks of all time. 
got in each other's way to get to Super Bowls. Competition at its highest in America's game. And they were never once pitted against each other like LeBron and Jordan, like Biggie and Tupac, like Kendrick and Drake, ever. So they only do this to black people. Stupid. It's dumb. And the music is so dumb. This is fucking stupid. There's no champion. What you like is what you like. Who cares? That painting's better than that painting. Who cares? You like that one? Buy that one. I like this one. I'm going to buy this one. It, it, it's art. That's what I'm saying. It's like, there's, there's no winner. So why the fuck are we talking about it? Because these niggas who can't rap, who can't sing, who can't produce, who can't mix, who can't master, who can't market, all they can do is talk shit. And y'all watch the shit so they get shows. And they get paid millions of dollars to talk shit about something that they can't do. The Stephen A. Skip Bayless effect. Stupid. It's fucking dumb. It's a dumbass conversation. So that's why people be making these lists and shit like, what list are you making? Who's your top five rappers? Who gives a fuck? Who cares? Who cares? Doesn't matter. That's why when people say hip-hop's competitive. No, it's not. It's not competitive. Because there's no competition. For something to be competitive, it has to be organized, there has to be a winner and a loser. No one wins and no one loses. The only time people lose is when they get shot or they go to jail. That's it. And niggas be getting killed over this shit. Stupid shit. It's not a competition. Someone listening to my music doesn't stop someone from listening to your music. We both can get paid at the same time from Spotify. We both can get paid at the same time from YouTube. We both can get paid. They brainwash too. And that's the shit that y'all listen to. You know, it's 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 like when you're inside of a of a of a sport and you're in it, you know, you're battling whatever's in front of you. For example, when I go to the gym and I lift, right? I have to channel something inside of me that says, I'm about to fuck this bar up. But once the bar's rested, I'm not going around telling everybody, I fucked the bar up. I'm the best bar fucker upper in the world. Why? Nigga, who cares? Good for you. There's a lot of bubble gun rapping going on. Who cares? What does that do for you? Did that get you more pussy? Did that put more money in your pocket? Did that help you sleep better at night? Who cares? If you say this one more time, I'm blocking you. I, I, I swear to God. Sports is different because you can actually measure it. You know, Dame Lillard had 55 the other night and they lost. You lost. We won. You're the loser. I'm the winner. Therefore, I'm better than you tonight. That never happens in rap. There's no way to keep score. There's no way to tell. Sports and rap are not the same. There's somebody who's worked in both. They're not the same at all. At all. Because in sports, if you lose, you don't make no more money. In rap, you can make money for the rest of your life. There are niggas who people are saying are losing in rap who are making more money than niggas y'all think are winning. People that haven't dropped music in 10 years are making millions a year because they own their shit. Who retired 10 years ago in the NBA is making $3 million, $4 million this year? Nobody. Once you retire from the NBA, NBA don't pay you no more. You can retire from rap and make money forever. It's, it's you know, it's crazy. You said the same thing eight times and you're trying to promote an artist. It's fucking lame. It's fucking corny. 
It doesn't get you fans. It doesn't work. No one's going to go click on that shit. Even if they do, they're clicking it because I'm talking about it and bringing attention to it right now. You're going to get seven clicks. And guess what? Tomorrow night at 2 a.m., they're not going to give a fuck about what you were talking about. Once again, a waste of time. Stop. Stop. This is why I have the class. All this shit y'all doing is why no one listens to your music. It's why no one fucks with you. Because y'all focus on the wrong shit. Who's better? I'm going to be bigger than you. I'm the best rapper. I can out-rap you. We can battle right now. You need to go listen to this nigga. Click on my shit. Come. That shit don't work. It doesn't work. You've been trying it for years. What's it done for you? Not a fucking thing. You know why? Because it doesn't work. It don't work. Yet you keep doing it. You wonder why you still work at Jiffy Loop. Trying to slide your fucking, trying to play your music when you, in somebody else's car while you fixing it. Shit don't work, man. Respectfully, though, there are measurements in discography and public. The public doesn't give a fuck about who is the best. Media do, because the media gets paid off of that. The public doesn't care. Because the public doesn't listen to who's the best. Because the public don't even know what the best is. All y'all in here, there's a lot of y'all here who would consider yourselves a rap expert. You don't even know what a fucking couplet is. You don't even know what an entendre is. And then there are people who know what that is. And they don't know how to make a single song to say their life. No one cares. I listen to what the fuck I want to listen to when I want to listen to it. When Little John came out, there were people that were saying, this is trash. That shit knocked. Why? Because it made me want to punch niggas in the fucking face. That was the point of the song. At the same time, I was listening to Nas. And niggas would get in my car, this shit's trash. No, it's not. Because it makes me think. It's my music. It's what I want to listen to. Whatever you want to go listen to, go listen to it. That's not competition, man. No, it's not. You know, competition means I want you to not win at all. Eminem and Jay-Z weren't competing on Renegade. They were ironing sharp. They were working out together. That's what it was. We're working out together. Competition means if you die, I don't care. If you don't make money no more, I don't care. If you end today, I don't care. NBA, this is competition. I want to send you home. I want your season to end. I don't want you to have no more playoff bonuses. Go. You think Jay-Z was thinking about that when he was on Renegade with Eminem? I want to end this white boy's career? No. You think Eminem was thinking about that? No. He's thinking, like, I got to have the best verse. Yeah, I got to have the best verse, too. And what happened? It's one of the best rap duo duets ever. Collabs ever. Y'all niggas think like children, which is why you get children results. Competition shit crazy. That's why I don't watch First Take no more. That's all they do. Pit black men against each other all day. Stupid. In fact, the only reason be publicly competing with other people on music is to make concert reviewers to watch, make money off of it. And they don't even make money off of it. The media does that. The labels do that. Because they own the magazines. They own the TV stations. They get the, aven the, the advertising revenue. That's it. Grammys don't even look cool no more. Grammys are fucking lame. No one cares about that shit because they don't they don't know nothing. That's owned by the labels, too. That's nothing but another media push. You win a Grammy, you're going to be on fucking Jimmy Fallon. Thanks. Battle rap is more of a competition that I will agree with because there's a winner and a loser. But even that shit, there's no objective measures. They're, they say they are, but they're not. It comes down to personal opinion. And personal opinion in that room at that time.
In reality, the only one you should be in competition with is yourself. And most people are scared of themselves because that's the biggest competition you face. That's that's public enemy number one. They know everything about you. All your insecurities, they know everything. Well, niggas don't want to face that. That's why they do dumb shit like Drake's better than Kendrick. Who fucking cares, dude? Neither one of them niggas know you. No, I don't fuck with battle rap. Shit's stupid to me. Yeah, that that's, is what it is. I agree. You know, I agree. It's it's I don't I don't I don't fuck with battle rap. The shit's turned into fucking rap porn. Shit's gross. Niggas be up there just. I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say, but you know, niggas niggas is uh. Who can embarrass who more? It's it's not even art anymore. It's just it's not art. It's not comedy. It's just you know niggas just just be talking. Sometimes the shit don't even rhyme. They just be saying, "Nigga, you snitched and you fucked a tranny because you a bitch." It's like it wasn't a bar. Billy Eilish, if you, you know what, if you haven't learned, and I, and I know you're 14, you know, so you haven't seen it yet, but but you'll see it again. But for anybody who's older, if you haven't learned by now that they be just placing motherfuckers in shit to push shit, Billy Eilish is 100% the example of that shit. 100%. They gave her song of the year, record of the year, um, best new artist, an album of the year. No one, no, let me turn this off. No one, no one in the history of music has ever won all four of those at the Grammys. No one, not Michael Jackson, not Elvis, not Prince. Name any great artist ever. She won all four. She swept that shit. You go in, in, in this era, in an era with Jay Z and Beyonce and Drake and, and Adele, and you know, just the weekend, Bruno, in an era of fantastic, legendary artists, she swept every major Grammy. Nobody had ever done that before. That's as, that's as rigged as that shit gets. If you still want to win a Grammy for that, after that, you just want white people to like you. You you just tap dancing for your fucking slave master. That's all you know. That's it. That's it. Exactly. It's like a museum, like an exhibit. It's an ignorant men- mentality. It's just that's what it is. It's a it's a museum. It's an exhibit. What you like, you stare at it longer. You don't really like something, don't look at it no more. Thoughts awesome, on clear and samples of independent artists. There's ways around that. It's, it, it's not frustrating. Just don't fuck them. <laughs> like, fuck them. Anybody watching that? That, that shit. I, it wouldn't shock me if in 10 years they ain't even got the Grammys no more. And people wouldn't care. Damn, that was the second album. That was Kings of Crown. They ain't recognized Hope till Annie. There you go. You know? Like, Nas didn't get his Grammy till this year. Nas. Snoop still don't have one. J. Cole don't have a solo one. I don't think Tupac or Biggie have one either. It's like, nigga, what, what are we what are we talking about? It doesn't matter. Like it's it's a it's a fucking dumbass conversation, you know. It's it's a dumbass conversation. Did y'all get y'all a free lesson?
with Spotify algorithm working in favor, you release lots of music, a little marketing behind each song. Listen, man, algorithms get behind shit that's working. That's all you need to know about algorithms. If people fucking with your shit, the algorithm's gonna help. Period. Because the algorithm's whole sole purpose is to keep people on that platform as long as they possibly can. And if you are keeping people on that platform as long as you can, then it's going to help you. If people are skipping over your shit, they're not going to help you. That's every algorithm. Spotify, YouTube, Instagram. I talk about this inside the class too. You know, if if you are keeping people there for a long period of time, they're going to help you. If you're not, they're not. Because the longer they stay on these platforms, you know what? I'm not even going to tell y'all that in the class. Rachel teach me about all this independent stuff. The industry is so bogus. People like you are a ray of hope in a way. And, and I, you know, Anish, and I and I accept that. And I really, really appreciate that. And that was my goal when I first started. So I completely understand. I appreciate you saying that. On the flip side, it's fucked up. It's fucked up that a person being honest about the music industry gets elevated so high because it's all fucking lies. You are 100% right about that bogus shit. I mean, I, you know, I came, I came from basketball. So I, I've seen the lies. I've seen the bogus shit. People acting like players ain't getting paid and shit. I, I, I've seen the shit. But when I got to this shit, I'm like, everything's a lie. Everything, all of it. The only thing that's true is if a motherfucker actually made the music. That's it. Everything else is a lie. I mean, when, when you read Donald Passon's book and shit, it's like, especially in the nineties, when uh, Napster came out. I mean, they were, bro. That's why the music industry thought they were gonna go under when Napster came out, because they were lying for so long. Napster was like, uh. No. Napster single-handedly changed everything. That's how predicated this industry was on lying. That two kids made one peer-to-peer -peer sharing service where you could just share files from your computer and almost shut down the whole fucking music industry. Crazy. Psycho. Insane. Insane. Just like go go read her story. Go read her story. Go read Olivia R Rodrigo. Go lead these random motherfuckers that pop up out of the blue and have the number one song. And then go go read their stories. It's all the same fucking PR story. All of it. Some young kid was making music, probably got picked on connected with somebody who they're close to, who was the producer. They made this song, uploaded to SoundCloud, got discovered by such and such, made this record. It charted number. What the fuck? Bro, you don't go from SoundCloud to charting on Billboard. That, come on, dude. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. And what happens is when you study the game, you know, and you keep reading this same story for every artist. Eventually, you start questioning yourself like, damn, why ain't it happening for me? Because you are living in a world of truth. They're living in a world of lies. They made a song that somebody at that record label discovered through somebody else, through somebody else, through somebody else. And it resonated with them because she was a little sad white girl. And they all know sad white girls. They ain't know how to market to sad white girls. She signed over all the masters. She don't own shit. And we're going to market a sad white girl to other sad white girls. All the shows about sad white girls. All the commercials about sad white girls. All the music videos about sad white girls. Anything got something to do with sad white girls, we're going to put her sad white ass in it. And what happened?
They fucked it up. They fucked up the whole industry. And the music industry keeps getting fucked up every time. You know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right about that. Cardi B don't make clown music. Once again, it's just not for you, nigga. She, she don't. She don't make clown music. There's a lot of people that connect with her shit. A lot. Just not for you. Because you're an idiot. Hell yeah, they're signed. I got a video about that where Logic talks about he was signed at Def Jam like a year and a half before like he announced it. She don't make shit. She's like every other motherfucker. <laughs> like, this is my personal opinion about her music. I'm listening to this shit. I'm like, I've heard this shit my whole life. <laughs> he just remixed it. But hey, Lil Nas X is a plan. I don't think he's a plan. He's he's completely sold out now. But he no, no, he's not. He wasn't a plan. No. He fucked it up. He fucked it up and he got on their side. They were not expecting that shit to happen. Because they absolutely, my fault, absolutely would have gave that to a white person. If they knew that country rap was going to do that, come on, man. You need to drop 20 plus instrumentals a day. Yeah, Bobby Schmurter was in there cooning. You know what's fucked up, though? There are, We got 100 people in here. At least 40 of them will do the same thing he did right now. They got offered tomorrow $50,000 to sign to a label. Don't own they shit. They got to perform on, on top of a table. Niggas be in there, nigga. They're lying about it. ASAP's, ASAP's fables. Crazy industry question. Do record labels a big artist that people scaring? In? No, 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 no. They don't do that. You know, what, what happens is like, you know, Niggas is looking at the same shit that you looking at. So they see something that's dope, they're going to run with it. It's like me, you know? I see a video that's been working on Instagram on somebody else's page. I take that shit. Same way people do with mine. You know, so it's not like niggas just scouring looking. But, you know, shit come across. You know, I'm Drake. Like, <laughs> my brand's way bigger than yours, so... So I said this industry shit is like, I don't know anybody that wants to be in the music industry, music business. I get it. Music industry. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, I don't understand what, what you're going to get out of that. You're making yourself miserable. Like it's a, it's a, it's a fucked up game. You can see it. Like you can really see it. Now things have kind of buttoned up a little bit, but like, you know, if you go back to like 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, niggas was doing interviews left and right because, you know, you had to do radio promo and radio interviews at that time, but everybody was putting it up on YouTube. So since they was putting all them interviews up on YouTube, nigga, you seeing these, these three, five, seven minute interviews of these artists on radio promo tours. And these niggas would just start keeping it real because this is the first time you really cuss the shit. If you watch enough, you can piece the shit together. That's what I did. Yo, J. Cole's probably done like 500 interviews. No bullshit. How many have you watched? If you watch all of them, you figure out his entire story and how he got to where he is. The, the entire thing. And it, So somebody asked about who's coming to the league, coming to the game authentically. Cole's one of them, but even him, once he once they decided to put him inside the system, they gave him the whole push too. All of them. You ain't finding something bubbling. I can't even say it's bubbling anymore. Labels ain't fucking with you till you on fire. And if you on fire on your own, what the fuck I need you for? Yeah. Joint venture deal for what? 
Do you know what a joint venture is? You, do, you, do you know what that means? They was going to do shit. They put you on a magazine cover, nigga, and a bunch of this stupid ass shit and makes it. They, they, late labels can make you famous to people's grandmas. That's it. Labels can make you grandma famous. And you want to be famous to grandmas? Go sign to a label. Nah, be and the reason being a niche is, is because you know there's so many people that are lazy and want to be slaves, they'll they'll sign over their ownership. You know, I, I got my class how to market your music on social media, and there's still a bunch of people, you know, who aren't gonna take it, who aren't gonna sign up for it, or so maybe people that will sign up for it, and they're still not gonna execute, and they think the label will do it for them. So the labels will always have some puppets. They'll always have some slaves. They'll always have that. Now, do I think that, you know, the label artists will be as popular as they are now? No, I don't think that. I think it'll get reduced. I still think a label will always make you popular because they own huge media platforms. You know, these labels just aren't Universal, Sony, and Warner by themselves, even though Warner's owned by Access Industries. You know, Universal is Universal. And not just universal music. You got universal studios. You got universal everything. Music parts, all types of shit. You know, Sony is fucking Sony PlayStation. You know, like these are massive fucking companies. If you know what a joint venture is, then why would you sign it? Can you elaborate on what you said a while back when you said the future streaming companies going to be paying people for their back catalogs? I don't know what I said with that. I said this, you know, we're going to get we're going to get royalties for our social media content and for our and for our music in here. So, you know, I think it's eventually going to get to the point where like this content isn't going to be as easy to put out. And whoever's put out the most and like, "Hey, you know, we want to buy like the way people are buying people's masters, like someone's going to approach me one day and be like, hey, I want to buy the ownership to all your YouTube videos. And for some of y'all, y'all don't care about YouTube the way you care about your music. So you probably sell that shit. I'm not, but well, you know, we'll see what the deal is. But, but for some of y'all, you would sell it immediately. You're better off with no label deal. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, if people still listen to the radio, it will make sense. No one listens to the radio anymore. So it 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 literally it they they can't offer you nothing. The pandemic just showed you that shows ain't you know, a label can't do nothing for you. Nothing. They say they can, but they, they can't do anything you can't do for yourself. Why y'all keep bringing up Cole Bennett? Why, why, why do y'all pay attention to this? He's, he's a music video director plant. Russ signed his deal a long time ago, man. And he's been out of it. Like, you know, things have changed. Who signed a deal in 2021? For what? And owns their shit. Bro, you asking all these questions, man. This is what I'm going to tell you. Stop being fucking scared and put out content. There's going to be no answer that I can give you that's going to alleviate all your fears. Either you want to make money from your content or you don't. If you want to make money, put out as much as you can. If you don't, then don't. There's no exact science to this. In the in the class, I give you as much of the exact science as I can. And even in, in the class, you're going to see some things and be like, man, I get it, but it's not direct information. No, it's not direct. This isn't school. I'm not your dad. Like, I'm one person's dad. 
I tell her to sit down, you know, because if she leans over, she might fall out of the chair. That's direct information with a direct consequence. I can't tell you if you put out six mixtapes a month that you're going to blow up and be rich. I don't know. I can tell you this. The more chances you put out, the better chance you got. But I can't guarantee nothing. I can guarantee my daughter, you know, if she'll be safe or not, or whatever. I can't guarantee you nothing. I can't. You, you just got to do it. It's got to stop being scared. Like y'all, y'all scared. Y'all don't want to put in the work. And while y'all sitting around scared, like I'm beating y'all ass. There's other people out here who are beating y'all ass because we're not scared. And there's, and you know, the fucked up thing, we're not fucked up, but it's funny too. It's like, you know, people fall off. People truly fall off. There are a lot of people that started doing this music business shit with me that ain't doing it no more. They, they couldn't keep up. You know, the amount of growth I've had this past year, like it's, it, they can't imagine. The amount of people I've lapped, they can't keep up. So if that's the case, you know, why are you tripping? Production network wise, what do you mean production? You can find beats on YouTube for twenty dollars. You want to go pay twenty thousand dollars for a beat? We can get one for twenty. It sounds just as good. Network what? You think networks are free? The only network that's free is is your, is your family, and they cost you money too. What do you think? What do you think a label is going to give you for free? Not a fucking thing. So if you got to pay for it, why would you sign up? Your personal opinion, which ours had a good deal. The only person I know that really had a good deal was Master P and Cash Money. Everybody else deals some bullshit. Rockefeller too. But that's like you're talking the 90s. We're really that was that three decades ago. And I appreciate you bumping the music, man. Thank you for that. Y'all need to give by Super Chat, Super Sicker. Get his money. Dollar sign group A to LLC Cash App. Do that right now. Quit being cheap. There's no harm in putting stuff out. Once you're a bigger artist, strategy makes some sense. But even young boy doesn't care about structure. He's one of the biggest right now. You know, sis, you got to put shit out, man. If I wasn't putting out content and developing this business the way I was, I would just put out music just all the time. So some of y'all don't know how to. Y'all always quick to brag. Hey, man, I produce, I write, I mix, I master. Why you got four songs out then? Hey, man, I've been doing this for 15 years, man. Why, why you got two albums out? That sells me that you're fucking lazy. The label is basically a big bank, but it's not, though. But it's not. <laughs> it's like, you know, because <laughs> it's not. Because, you know, if your numbers are right, the bank would give you the money. Labels will still fuck with you. They'll still be like, hey, we ain't doing that because we don't want to. Are we giving out enough money this this quarter? Wait till next quarter. My album's been done for a year. Eh, fuck your album. I work your stuff every day. Hone your craft, be consistent. People don't want to put in the hours to get experience. That ass. That's true. It's absolutely true. So, all right, man. Two hours, 40 minutes. This was, this was extremely long. You know, you haven't went and got to class, get the free lesson. Go to groupaid2university.com. Get that shit right now but this is dope i'm gonna turn these ads on this bitch but i love y'all mouth the pond y'all stay true <laughs>